Welcome back, Screamers, to another episode of Zero Point Reviews. I am Jeff, joined as always by my co-host, Kevin. This is John Carpenter Month, and we're keeping it strong with Prince of Darkness. Kevin, you ever seen this one before? I have seen it a few times in the past, but I've never owned it until the Scream Factory Blu-ray. But I always get a kick out of rewatching this because it feels like an amalgamation of most of his films. That's probably the best best description i could have ever thought of that's that's it but no i hadn't seen but maybe two minutes of this when it first came out on vhs and my dad i think per, sent me to bed ap after he started watching it and he didn't like it he said it sucked and i'd never seen it since then and thought well how bad could it be because my dad, dad tends to like really shitty stuff I just didn't understand what he didn't like. What do you think he didn't like? Uh, without looking down on my dad, um, I think the science at the time might have been one of those things that kind of swerved his enjoyment factor. But what I remember very specifically is he thought this was a movie about Dracula because it was Prince of Darkness. Um, and was just very disappointed that it wasn't a vampire movie. I, I've never heard Dracula called the Prince of Darkness before. <laughs> Satan plenty of times, so I don't know where he got that mix up. I don't think I've heard that before either. I've always attributed that to being like the son of Satan, like say Warlock or, you know, the prophecy movies where they reference that a little bit. So Prince of Darkness is just, Devil or Devil's Son to me. Kind of, yeah. And, and I mean, I grew up with him telling me that, you know, Dracula was basically the best or strongest of all monsters, which completely gave me a complex when I was like, then why is Godzilla king of the monsters? <laughs> but <laughs> um, yeah, anyway, that's going to be a zero point. So we'll just... <laughs> One for Kevin. <laughs> Is that the first one already? God damn it. That's okay. I mean, what I like about this is oh, like, need to start or how I've always movies. kind of like, when I've watched this movie and I see like half the cast of Big Trouble in Little China, I start screaming for Kurt Russell to show up out of nowhere because good old Jack should be showing up with his Pork Chop Express shirt and truck and keep on, keep the movie rolling because you got Father the priest donald pleasance you know some places call him father loomis which is kind of funny but in this movie they just call him the priest just about everywhere else i kind of like the idea of father loomis because in halloween 4 he has fun with another priest and they are drinking it up and it's like is that a subtle reference between halloween 4 and like prince of darkness i don't know just a thought it was the same year wasn't it 88 i think uh this was 87 five, eight. no I yeah thought. i think it was the same year god damn it no okay then <laughs> darkness october 23rd um, 1987 dang my son would have known that totally would have known that anyway you totally was um, smoked your ass in movie trivia oh man you're losing it no dates anything with dates my kid is like calendar man <laughs> it's it's his Big autism kid. but he's so good with dates and calendars and stuff like that yeah but it just reminds me of uh harley quinn the first episode where harley and ivy are trying to escape arkham and I ivy's telling harley you know Joker's not going to get you out. How long have you been here? Hey, calendar man. Oh, hi. Six weeks, seven months. <laughs> That's my son. Back to this story, though. <laughs> Never mind. That's my second zero point. I'm sorry. Yep. But not a problem. Did, did you 
did you find creepiness in this movie? Eventually it got there for me. The whole uh, premise is basically the is, is Satan is he some sort of liquid entity? What the hell are we doing? So it's a very different interpretation of what you know you would think of Satan and the evil. But you know, a lot of the ancillary things of you know, I'm gonna compel you or I'm gonna mind control you, then I'm gonna possess your body, I'm gonna do some sort of demonic transference and it almost felt like a bit invasion of the body snatchers crossed with a traditional Satan demon possession style kind of movie. So there was some unsettling things to it. There was good creepiness and atmosphere. I don't know what really delivered on like the scares and the overall complete horror atmosphere. It's kind of a, a mishmash of things, this movie but still somehow it comes together in the end and it feels like it was enjoyable. It's just kind of hard to describe exactly what this movie is. But to your uh, question, I did get some creepiness out of it and I really enjoyed the creepy am atmosphere, especially in like this old big ass church where everything's taking place in. Yeah, the church was actually kind of pretty and for it being an abandoned building, it was clean as hell um just a little dusty a here and there that. like yeah like it 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 it's dilapidated to a point <laughs> it's just the one guardian priest that's been living there guarding this ooze um but it's super duper clean on the inside so you really got to tip your hat to the guardian priest yeah who finally so how do you understand that this movie is going is the priest just looking for I know they say it, but he's looking for a scientific explanation of what's being contained and he wants the world to know it is they say that, but is that really what he's trying to do in your opinion? Yes. Okay. So that having been said, they, they could have proved it during when Jesus was here because Jesus of course was an alien traveled here to warn us about this thing but didn't have the science to prove that this thing existed so we contained this thing after jesus was killed or gone home whichever and waited for two thousand years until the science could prove it to the rest of the world because they thought jesus was a loony and they killed him for okay. it so <laughs> now they want to prove it on a molecular level and they use a bunch of neat words that they read in Omni magazine, like tachyons, which is time-related molecules and whatnot. And they all run. And, and they start weaving this story that, that, like you said, the devil, yeah, is in all these things, the in between the molecules and in the science, making man doubt and and, and cling on the reality, having it be that being a finite thing, and that's how it makes you doubt, and that's how it deceives you. And they lost that during some point in the movie. It it stopped being a science thing and then got to that weird possession movie. And they didn't they didn't mix well for me. Yeah, that's probably where ultimately the movie kind of didn't really gel the best of the way, and why it's not really one of the more well-rated John Carpenter movies. Like this is where one people are a bit divisive on this one in general. It's still a good movie it's just kind of hard to how do you describe it to somebody who doesn't know about horror movies and sci-fi movies and it's like so where does people really do fit down the line of this movie and that's probably why it didn't do as good as it could have hoped but like most carpenter films from this era if they weren't great big hits at the box office they eventually became cult classic hits and the movie's obviously well made it's got a great score to it and it's just in between some of his better movies so this one kind of falls through the cracks and also the next one that we do in the mouth of madness which was more uh 94 i believe that one was and i have not seen that one that's one of the so. very few john carpenter movies i have not seen but this is part of the uh, apocalypse trilogy of john carpenter where it's the thing prince of darkness and then in the mouth of madness it's what he calls his apocalypse trilogy 
So they're they're not connected in any way, shape, or form. It's just end of the world type kind of movies, I guess. I don't know about in the mouth though. We'll see. I was just that made me really excited for a second. Like, oh, there's connections. I love connections. <laughs> hey, um, unless Kurt no, Russell that, that shows up in the mouth of madness, I that. don't know. They need to work together again, god damn it. On something. What you want to escape from Earth? But um <laughs> half the time, yes, yes, I do. But I didn't know they were making a movie about it either. Or that was the third movie you said, wasn't it? Uh well, that was or their the, long the plan. Yeah, that was their long gestated idea they had years ago when they did Escape from L.A. Hey, we're going to do a third one, and it's going to be Escape from Earth, and he goes into space. Yeah, when everybody else was going into space, like leprechauns and whatnot. Just send them back to the hood. Yeah, because they had to get once. Yeah, once you go to the hood, where else can you go? It's like space. Inglewood, the final frontier. Then it's space. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's going to Mars. Uh, that'll probably be for I don't I still don't know that I could bring myself to watch that. Like Coast of Mars. That's one of those times where you're like, about. why did you do that? And then you hear ka in the back of your head. That is about the time I, uh, I kind of started to wane know. on John Carpenter as a director. But not to say he's a bad director, but that's about where my my affinity for his film started to uh like oh that wasn't great oh this isn't that good either mm. so that that tended to happen for me um golly i'd i'd say that starting with this um okay like i i can't say that uh I can't even think of what we just watched last week. It, that, Escape from New York. I can't say that that was a bad movie. It wasn't. It uh, it was a little bit more fast-paced than Halloween. I didn't realize that Big Trouble in Little China was a flop in the box office. That movie is fucking gold. <laughs> like you said, it's, it is a cult classic. Um, this was just a step down. It wasn't as fun as that, but it had, like you said, half of the cast, which are all amazing cast members. And they're super fun to watch. It's just almost like they lost the plot line halfway through the movie. Yeah, it's kind of hard to figure out like where the movie really fell apart. It just, for me, it just felt at times it didn't know what direction it really wanted to take. But at the same time, it still ends up basically where they kind of started from in some way, shape, or form, if that makes sense. But it's still. Like, I still enjoy it, and I I'm happy so. to have it in my collection. It's just kind of hard to really define the movie and what it was really aiming for. Clearly, it was trying to take, you know, a dissection of some some humanity to it, like who we are, where we're going, what we're doing, and then just the whole interaction of this is from the future. What are we supposed to do? But then you don't find out to the very end that Catherine walks out and she's possessed by the by the evil entity and oh shit we're not done cliffhanger we're not done and then that's her on the tv isn't it or you think yeah, it's, that's the it's one... her on the tv from the future yeah yeah which that was kind of a weird thing too because that went absolutely nowhere I mean, yes, to your point, they, they had her be the one at the end, but she was never that person. And you never find out who that person is, where the people actually are. I mean, I think you said it said 1999 yeah. is when they were transmitting. But it from. would always cut off at one nine. Yeah. Nine. yeah. It, it, it was weird. It was weird. It was intriguing. And it became bad because it didn't go anywhere. That That's just my opinion on it. It wasn't bad until it just didn't mean anything. There was no fruition from it. No one to send back the messages. 
Well, it was almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Hey, this is going to happen. And it happens. Nothing remains unchanged. It's like some weird convoluted time travel story told in a satanic yet alienish way without being completely one or the other. It's almost like maybe it would have been better served if this was more singular in its definition of genre. Like, don't go from time travel to sci-fi to being the evil incarnate, the devil himself. And then you're going through mirror dimensions. I mean, just listening to just those four things in a row of what this movie has in it, it almost feels like, okay, more should be less. You could do less with, you could do much more with less than just adding, hey, yeah. let's do the A, B, C, and D, and let's go. It's like, maybe you should have just stuck to A and B. Not to say I like this is a bad movie. It's just it does have some issues with its direction and their tone overall. But, you know, the casting is pretty good. Kind of. I really like, you know, Simon and Simon guy, Jameson Parker. I like him. It was weird seeing him with a mustache, though. Oh, Brian. <laughs> Brian is a what would you say 40 year old 35 year old student uh he's commonly chasing around this redheaded girl unbeknownst to her and and staring at her you could say he was a Fondly, grad student not maybe creeping working on too a hard. phd or a thesis that's true but he wasn't very observant. And I think that's why he didn't have his doctorate. And my point being is while he's staring but, at this lady, he's doing so right in a big pile of fire ants. <laughs> and it's like, dude, you figure that shit out right quick. Hey, go away. <laughs> there you go. Anyway. <laughs> Brian, Brian was fun. He was not the hero I was expecting. And didn't turn out to be the hero at all. Yeah, he was just kind of... I don't think. Like, another cog on the Brian wheel. As the hero? Him as a hero, he just kind a of... A little bit. I mean, I, I define him as the final girl. <laughs> the final girl, that's funny. Um, Yeah, he's basically one of the last few standing. And, you know, he lost Catherine because she sacrificed herself for everybody. But in doing so, she became the evil entity at the very end. So, and he's reaching out to the mirror because he's dreaming about her. It's like, yo, what the hell's going on here? We're, we're doing some like reverse double twist ending like here. I, I, I don't know. Like there really was not a hero. Even Donald Pleasant's character is the priest. He struggled to be the hero at the end that had more of a straightforward. His character was more of a straightforward arc than anybody else's arc. And then you had um, Professor Bilak, who is Victor Wong. You know him from Tremors. You know him from Big Trouble in Little China. He was freaking great. He had a, a little bit of an arc, but it just kind of ended at the end. It's like, wait, where the hell did he go? What's he doing? What are we doing? So it's kind of like this movie left you holding the bag a little bit on some characters and story points. But at least, you know, Doc, Donald Pleasance is the father. Father Loomis, we'll call him. At least he rolled off into the sunset and ambulance being like, yeah, I chopped some fucking head off. <laughs> <laughs> he was so happy too. Like, we did it. We did it. <laughs> like craziness. But like, if that man happy. a drink. But uh, uh, yeah, but about that, like I've spent the last well, three weeks at this point, really making some good Donald Pleasance jokes and alcoholic jokes. He was so good in this movie. This is not the man we've seen in the last two films we've discussed. He was not drunk. He was very professional. He, he you felt emotion from him. You felt like his world all just came crushing down. Not the fact that the world may end, but the fact that his God doesn't exist but the devil does and and he takes it all pretty well in stride i'll oh, be yeah. crazy by the end 
Well, did you like when he was like standing behind the giant armoire for like a good like 15 minutes of the movie and he's thumping through the Bible while the uh, other poor guys like just staring at the mirror being like just wigging out for whatever reason? It's like, dude, did somebody give that man coke? That was what, what's going on? What's he struggling with here? <laughs> <laughs> that is kind of like coke though <laughs> um yeah i mean not that i know anything great. about that I mean, the, the, the actor doing that was doing a great job me neither <laughs> um he you could tell he felt like there was a man inside of his body trying to get out and it was crying because it didn't want to do the things it was doing and you felt bad for him and you were scared for Father Pleasance or Fa Father Loomis because he was stuck behind that armoire in the bathroom. But then you're sitting there like, the fuck are you doing? He's sitting there reading the Bible. It's like, you just told us that shit doesn't work. Run! <laughs> like, why? Is, is that because that's all you know to do? It could be. It, all, it could also be that he was I, I trying know. to they, find they strength tried... in reading that. perhaps but because uh, he didn't the, have a bottle of booze the, to give him the, the strength that that they were deciphering was <laughs> <laughs> liquid courage gentleman jack we do apologize to everybody if there's a slight delay for. in like audio here or stream yard is just acting a little funny but we're just rolling with it so stick with us we got you on a fun review here so Again, dang it! That's I okay. Really we can sorry. keep rolling. No, nah, it could be Streamyard. Like All I right. watched some other YouTubers out there, and like in the last week or so, they are all having some slight issues with Streamyard. And for our viewers too, you know, you probably get this too. You you watch other videos and other YouTube channels, and they sometimes have these issues too. It's okay. We're still here. We ain't clipping. We're we're going. You're still going. If it's any consolation and not to fluff you, you're coming through perfectly. Yep. At least on my end. That's fine. So. Got a slide for us, Kevin. But I don't want to zero point this any further. I do. I was been wanting to talk about the translations that they were doing because he was talking about how yes. this Bible that they had, more or less of of truth, was written and erased written and erased to swerve the truth from ever being like told that. and it, yeah. you try you try to to decipher some of it and all i can come up with was come culprit tuba atrium Klaatu. And i'm just kind of like well golly, no wonder there's no hope <laughs> 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 But Victor Wong had the he, he had the best line when it comes to what's happening here. The outside world doesn't want to know about this bullshit. And neither did we. And that word Yeah, that word gets tossed around so often like usually by people who are going to die, which was not Victor in this case, which is we'll get to that later, but um like bullshit and caca was used so many times and it's like i was sitting there giggling like a tit and i was like dude said caca yeah there was some good written characters in this movie outside of basically like some of the plot problems with it like victor's great donald's great i mean jameson parker he's a fine actor it's not on him why gerald mccraney ended up doing more because of he became what was it uh major dad or whatever it was god what was that show oh yeah yeah but Sounds it's like you right. know he, he was fine he pro he did not need to grow a mustache out for the role but like you know there's a there was some really good fun actors in this and i thought they all did pretty good considering the kind of you know that's never been a problem with carpenter is writing a good dialogue and script it's just sometimes the the overall script is 
it can be a little wonky like this one but you know he goes on to do big trouble in little china and that one's a mishmash too and that one works out just fine so and then there's they live in the following that year he does it with piper which was another phenomenal movie like i i, I don't Fucking remember that one that doing one. very well and i remember my dad saying yeah yeah, like I've never, I've watched the whole thing. I don't, I don't think I own that one, but it's like I greatly enjoyed it when I finally got to see it. It's like this is awesome. <laughs> yeah, who doesn't love Hot Rod? So fuck yeah, and Keith David. Fuck yeah, but uh, the evil on this now. I was going to show the poster later on, and I don't know how much you could see of it, and it's the green screen, so just. Imagine oh, that that's cool, shape though. there is is what the evil is. Yeah, it's. I didn't realize that the evil really was this green mist that you see throughout the in, on the poster, and it's sitting there spinning around in this tube that looks like something out of Ninja Turtles, and it's got corrosive going all down it and and crosses surrounding it because of course they don't do anything of course so we're going to surround it with crosses for no reason um and they carbon dated the the corrosion coming out of it at seven million years old which they got carbon dating within a couple hours in 87 which is really impressive yeah that was pretty wild i'm like what the hell is going on here because <laughs> that kind of came out of nowhere for me but whatever they like I said, they take a lot of terms out of Omni magazine and they throw it in here. Uh, they took some more or less cutting edge physics and philosophy at that point, like Schrodinger's cat, and tried to explain it in layman's terms. That didn't work out very well. <laughs> Bless his <laughs> heart, Dennis Dunn. Yes, yeah. Dennis Dunn trying to be a, trying to understand the Schrodinger's cat. I was kind of like, dude. Wang, she doesn't have green eyes. Just move along. Move along. Just, yep, just <laughs> just keep it going, brother. You don't have to keep feeding into that. <laughs> Was his character gay in this? I don't know. Could be. Cause Flip a coin. I, I think he I think he was. At, at one point I had written a note down like, damn, Brian's a homophobe. Cause uh Dennis was complaining. I had I was taking this model out for this, that, and whatever this weekend. And Brian turns and looks and says, Yeah, where were you taking him? And he goes, Man, screw you. And he just walks away. But then he's talking to the other woman about the rashes and hives. Oh, you know, I used to get hives all the time when I was 12, and my doctor just said it was gay anxiety. And I'm like, Oh, okay. Erase that. Brian's not a homophobe. Never mind. I wasn't you know, sure. When I he was just wrote doing very some... ambiguously. Yeah, you know, when I was doing some research, I, you know, I thought I read other comments about him possibly being an allegory for, or even a metaphor, or actually being like gay. So, hmm, could be. It it didn't change his character one way or the other. I mean, again, the yeah. ambu ambiguity of it. Who cares? I uh, mean, yeah, it doesn't really. It, it, the curiosity was more on for my was more of like Brian's statement. Like, were you being an asshole just there, slinging out a little bit of locker room talk because it's the 80s? Or were you actually just genuinely asking, where are you taking this guy? Yeah. I don't know. Apparently it was the latter. So I'm, that makes me happy because Brian's a much better character than that. At least he comes yeah. off as a better character than that. He does, however, congratulate his penis after sleeping with women. <laughs> <laughs> and before we forget it we just celebrated veterans day and there's something very worth noting and just recognizing in this film and that's victor wong's mullet he was rocking business in the front party in the back throughout this whole flick and came off just as as knowledgeable as Egg Shan would have. We Wait salute you, head. Mr. Long Beard, Long Mullet wearing awesome dude from three <laughs> other great movies. We salute you. 
real Wong of Genius. Wong of Genius. I do love him. I, I wish we could have met him before he passed. He, like, he just seemed like a cool dude. Oh, God. Like, between this, between Big Trouble Little China and, like, Tremors, like, how can you not like a great character like him? And putting him in this movie worked for me. Like, it did not feel out of place. It felt like, you know, I can buy that. He's one of those kind of actors that you give him a role, he walks right in, he crushes it. It's like you could trust that guy to give you whatever you need out of a role. And ultimately, that's what really helps with this movie along is like, like we talked about earlier, the great cast. You do have a really solid cast, despite like, you know, what you might be doing with some characters and overall storylines. But like, everybody's got a good character to them. Everybody's got a character. The big question is, can you name every character in this movie? uh brian not brian uh dr Leahy, alice cooper <laughs> um no not not remotely <laughs> well yeah because we were looking and up I before just we started IMDb we're like too, so I... who the hell did donald pleasance play and it's like, no, he's just listed as priest on like four different places and Father Loomis on some fan Wikipedia page. And I'm like, what the hell do we call him? And we couldn't figure out his name because they never mention it and he's not credited as anything other than priest. Well, and see, that's one of the things about this movie is, is it leaves a lot up to interpretation. Uh, starting with his name, and when you see him going to talk to the cardinals to explain what happened and what's in this this chest, you can hear everything just fine, except for his conversation with the cardinals because the the sound from the fountain is muting them out. Oh and yeah, that's one that's of those. Right. Uh, I want to say carpenter signatures that you kind of see in this flick where it, it does add to the stress and tension of the movie. Yeah. But it also makes you, it, there's this movie leaves a lot up to the audience to decide like Pleasance will say, do you feel that it just changed? And so that, that, that makes the audience have to believe that there's something else in the room. So if he's not able to deliver that line, the audience may not fucking feel that. And the way that he was written in that regard, the, the priest, I mean, I didn't feel it. Like I, I knew that I was supposed to be feeling some sort of evil presence because they were telling me, but nothing right. other than them telling me signified there was an evil presence other than yeah. this swirling green tube of ooze. Which was uh, slowly dripping up onto the ceiling and the big ceiling bath that it was. <laughs> that was kind of cool, though. But I love the way that they filmed this. It was all forced perspective, like you were standing next to yeah. the big cowboy in, in Vegas or what have you. And and it worked. It wasn't it, it wasn't stupid, but it just very much was noticeably forced perspective. Yeah. Um, but then the 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 pool on the top that was fun. I liked watching the dripping. I thought it was funny that the guy that had been down there for like six hours didn't notice <laughs> any of that. I know, right? But then the lady that goes down there is like, "What's that?" Within seconds, she sees this shit and is looking up with her mouth gaping open. Like, w what do you expect to happen? Even Steve. if this wasn't a horror film, if this was a comedy, that same shit would have happened. <laughs> well, if there's one thing that's improved is uh, she swallows. <laughs> Next time, lady, spit. It can be your friend. She does. She does. See, <laughs> Kinky. Where they fucking, 
where they possess that, you know, I was laughing so hard. I had to stop it <laughs> and, and like wipe my face because it was a bong. The sound that they were playing when she was sucking out his innards or what have you was a bong sound. There's somebody sitting there like this off, off the camera. I'm like, probably John. I'm not even going to. That's how this movie got made. Yeah, I'm not even going to pretend to not know what that is. It works. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if Stephen King could be doing coke while doing maximum overdrive, anybody could do weed while doing a real movie. I think you're supposed to be blow while you're on sets. Well, otherwise like, you're just blowing on sets. It's true. Pretty much. Blow. <laughs> there's a lot of nastiness in this movie and we put a lot more back into it too you're um, welcome some of the writing was funny enough that i needed to make fun of it like in riff form like where they're talking about the gospels i jesus send my angels it, like it was it was written in proper english with grammar that was kind of unnecessary and then they go on to start explaining this thing, mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, and the abominations of earth, and this and that. And it's like, all I can hear is like, well, yo mama's so fat that <laughs> <laughs> it, it just kind of went, it was weird. And then it starts talking to them. And it's, it's saying, yeah. God can't save you, or your Jesus can't save you now. Uh, and it says, in fact, on. you will not be saved. Yeah. And I'm just kind of like, did, did, did the devil just think he was clever by putting that all in caps or something? Like, that just, that wasn't very Dude, clever to me. I'm sorry. Just got to say, you got, had to learn internet swearing at some point. You got, or yelling at some point. You got to do all caps because you're that means you're screaming. You can thank this movie for starting that craze. Thanks, John Carpenter. Thank you. Well, it's I mean, really, that's that's really what they were kind of doing was was saying, this isn't going to save you, and that isn't going to save you. In fact, you know what? You're not going to be saved at all. Like that's really the way the writing was coming off, and it was kind of dumb, dumb. That's what I'm looking for. fucking stupid that's the word i'm looking for the the writing was fucking stupid in certain parts like our two possessed ladies here pushing a large barrel of ooze across the church and no one hearing it you, you think you'd hear the creaking of the wheels e, 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 e. so where's the wd-40 yo that or <laughs> across the floor or something yeah, I, I don't know. The, the the movie had for just as many of great moments, it had some really, really stupid shit. And that's where it got really stupid. And they finally start to make up for it by not sprinkling, just dosing the horror on top of it when they show you this guy. This guy who had been killed previously and is sitting yeah. there talking to them basically the same way with the same dialogue as that stupid computer was was being held up and and puppeteered by bugs and roaches and beetles. And it just starts to like drop apart into bugs and roaches and beetles. And it was so gross and disturbing. It's like, yes, that's what I've been waiting for throughout this entire flick. And you do get that, but it takes a long time to get there. Yeah, that's probably one of my favorite scenes. It almost felt like they had watched like Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, and they're like, what can we do with bugs that nobody's seen before? Oh, let's do this. And then when they would do practical effects, it turned out pretty, pretty good. Yeah, I mean, because really they they had bugs like stuffed inside all sorts of meat and like the word of the day was putrid on this set there were so many maggots and beetles uh and just rotten meat like it must have stunk like shit so bad on this set and half the crew had to be like 40 feet uh, away going like oh god can we finish this shot already well 
Well, kind of. I mean, because you've got worms. They had worms smeared to everything. Disregard Mr. Beardsley there. It's just, that's a reference to squirm. Then you've got, <laughs> like I said, where uh, here, the maggots and the meat that this lady's carrying around. Like you, you see that sort of thing all throughout the flick. And maggots and decay just have this thing with humans. It's like it grosses you out. It's disturbing me because you know that's going to be you in the final days. You know, it, it, inevitably that's all of us. And we don't like that. So when it force fed to your eyes, it's just, it's horror beauty. Yeah. But it much. wasn't I, I, enough. Yeah. Go ahead. I was oh, going to say, it, it didn't you. jive with what the monster turned out to be. That's true. I mean, I hate to take us off on a different question, but you showing that picture reminded me of something I wanted to ask you. It was like, so what did you think of the allegory of the homeless being all, all of the homeless being evil minions of Satan? Do you think that was his statement of saying homelessness oh, is okay. bad? Like, let's get him off the street? Or what do you think? Because... Seeing that from the word go in this movie was like, yo, that's pretty powerful to be saying something like that and hear like all homeless people are evil in this area. What's up with that? What it is, is the people that were closest to it, the people that were hopeless, needy, whatever, what ever you could imagine a homeless person being schizophrenic uh schizophrenic mental illness drug addicted uh whatever rapist crazy person that evil just pulled all those people out of the alleys and magnified in in all of them so much it's like this place was their mecca they were waiting for something to explode and then we see the great moment in horror history where uh Let's see, where is it here? Alice impales Tom Kickstand Bray with the unicycle. This is the first unicycle kill in horror history. Tom kickstand. It was a really neat effect. In well, fact, he had to feed the his was created uh, by Alice. <laughs> <laughs> that was a, a prop from one of his concerts and he brought it it, oh. it was it was his i did not know that i i haven't watched any like uh behind the scenes features or anything like that for this i just wanted to watch the movie eventually i'll get her i do like special features on movies but i don't always watch them right away unless i'm going to be doing like a review on our channel here but you know, I should probably go and take a look at some of the background and research on this. I know you typically do because you work on the slides and you like to have some good tidbits that I like to be surprised by. So I always appreciate all the work you do on that. So thank you for doing that. I appreciate that. I was trying not to be mean this week, especially in light of what you were saying, because no, not all homeless people are drug addicts, perverts, murderers, whatever. There is sometimes little Susie's dad that lost his job and they couldn't make ends meet. That did happen. They they pushed that a lot in the 80s. That was a big, huge thing. So for Carpenter to have them be villains rather than victims might have hurt him too. I don't know. Yeah, because the only thing I'll really I mean, say about like, the I get it. thing that We're he's past got that going point on. in time now. We... <laughs> Yeah, the only thing I'd say is like the mob effect he has going on seems to be a, almost a, a formula or a trope for John Carpenter. You got assault on Precinct 13. You have a gang going after the police station. You have the fog. You have a bunch of ghosts swarming a town. You have Prince of Darkness. You got another group of like evil is, is infesting the homelessness. Then you got they live. It's all the aliens. It's like this constant like mob surrounding the main stars closing in on him throughout the movie it's he's got this thing for doing all encompassing around the the stars of the movie and the story it's kind of funny he doesn't do that for all of his movies but through the the set 
through the 80s, he tends to do this a bit. Big Trouble Little China. You got warring factions of the Chinese, and you also have the supernatural stuff going on. So it's just like you keep surrounding your, your main cast with a looming threat of uh, of gangs or mobs coming at you. I, I still can't understand how that wasn't a success. Like, that movie was fucking amazing. It's probably zero point, zero point. <laughs> Well, we'll eventually get to that when we do our next John Carpenter month, which there will be one uh, coming up in the future. So stay tuned. We got more John Carpenter goodness and maybe not so goodness coming up. Maybe, 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 maybe. Um, the kills. How did you like the kills in this movie? Some Other of them than were the unicycle, good. I mean. Yeah, for the most part, I liked them. Um, there wasn't really any I was disappointed in. I just thought, unfortunately, I hate to put it this way, but like when I when the black guy was like trying to nick his throat, I thought he was legitimate. Like the first time I ever watched this movie, I thought he was legitimately dead. And when he didn't die, it's like, what is going on in this movie? Because they all stopped and were like, what the fuck is going on here? And then he's not dead. He just ends up being possessed. And it's like, Oh, that's not what I was expecting. Um, no, I think he, I think, I think he was dead because uh, somebody else, I oh, think, God. died too and got back up. Oh, uh, this this guy who had his neck. Oh yeah, broken, neck snap. Yeah, he got back up. <laughs> yeah, and, and he might skeet later. So feeling cute. <laughs> Let's <play it> IDK. <laughs> Coming for uh, you, I mean, that was his modeling pose. You've got to say that was his all GQ. Face. The ID case, but then the kill that that was very unceremonious that uh, you were kind of waiting for throughout the whole movie, and it didn't show you much, was where the Prince of Darkness kind of gets out of the bottle. The, the two ladies bring the, the big ooze thing into the the room where the, the mom or the blonde lady is taking a nap. And yeah, because like they rub the cylinder just right to let it all burst the out. They let the genie And then out it just the like lamp. starts yeah. shooting down into her eyes and mouth. Like it's yeah. super force. It was a really, really neat effect. I don't think it was done backwards. It might have been, but it looked really it cool. It might have been. Didn't make a whole lot of sense, but it didn't need to. No, yeah, some of the practical effects, that's just what they did. I mean, sometimes when you have, like, no or low budget, you got to be very creative. Like, I can see how they did the, the water on the ceiling, the, you know, the liquid going up there. They just flipped the... The negative you know that's all you really gotta freaking do for that like you really shot it going straight down into the ground and you just flipped it it's great perspective it's a great trick i mean movies could stand to be doing more practical effects these days like that so you're saving some money you don't have to spend hey if they if they spent 20 dollars doing that shot why are you spending 10 million dollars trying to do it by cgi this year just saying but yeah you know I This, not to show this again, it'd be nasty, but this shot here is repeated three, four different times uh, amongst different victims where they get shot in the mouth or they spit from one person to the next, like Dilophosaur. And, and it's silly each time, but it works each time. And it works Pretty each movies. time because it's it's been believable. Yeah. Have that been done with another surface, another type of CGI effect? may have looked okay but it wouldn't have been believable i mean was this believable not necessarily obviously you know how it's done but you could see how you could see it was squirting you could see her getting splashed in the face right like a golden shower <laughs> yeah that got us demonetized thanks kevin i meant green shower green shower 
I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm not. But then they they did they did really neat explaining um, the possession when the prince starts to emerge. It's he's not possessing the soul; he's actually possessing the body, like a virus uh, absorbing the host tissue. And that was really neat when they explained it until they showed it. Because you got Dennis Dunn explaining everything for the people in the other room who can't see what's happening. And yep. like he randomly goes, oh, and by the way, I think her bone structure is changing. <laughs> and he says that super duper serious. But you could tell that there's like, like fear in his voice is the reason why he's saying it. But really, let's be real about this. Like, she had syphilis. She went crazy. She had sores all over herself. And all she wanted to do is sleep the whole movie. Sleep the whole movie. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way to get out of a Carpenter movie. Just go sleep on a cot and hopefully he doesn't come calling for you. <laughs> yes. And then it gets weird. Then it gets weird. And then it gets weird? <laughs> Satan's what son who's who's his daughter takes the blue pill to find truth rather than the red pill to keep being comfortable and is able to stick her fingers into the mirror universe Father. and Father. yes yeah, so then you get to see the mirror universe and her fingers poking Whew. through that little hole there. That made me pucker up. <laughs> <laughs> and then that it shows it a moment later, like she's got her whole... Yes. No, that's, I'm sorry. That was Stifler. Oh, okay. That's Stifler. <laughs> Chris Evans, way to go. And then Jeff. she's got the whole hand in there, of course. And it, it, it leads up to the oldest joke in the book, literally. Pull my finger. Which then leads that, to like one of the worst things I've ever seen somebody do. Catherine runs in, spears the bitch through the mirror. Why don't you just run up and give her a good shove? <laughs> all you had to do was give her a shove. Just, just push the bitch. That's all you had to do. One tiny little push is, oh, nope. Okay. Okay. Yep. And then yep. Father Loomis, who's sitting there watching the whole thing, knows that she's on the other side, has this axe, and, you know, doesn't even bother to wait for her to get out, just chucks it at the mirror. And you see poor Catherine float away. <laughs> she say, she, she, she uh, sacrificed herself. Yeah. Yeah. That's the ticket. Sacrifice. Couldn't even help her get the fuck out. Can't have a happy ending in a John Carpenter yeah. movie. Yes, we can. Because uh -oh. Victor Wong lives. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't I wasn't ready for that. I got super high at it. I've never seen him really well. No, he does survive big trouble in Little China, but he gets arrested. Anyway. I was just super excited. I did, did not expect him to live through this movie. No, I was pretty cool with that, too, because he dies in fucking Tremors, which is ridiculous. He gets bit in the ass at first <laughs> and then dies. Poor bastard. Yep. Oh, well. So, but I mean, this... I had to stop and ask myself like seriously did uh -oh. did i kind of do my dad wrong thinking that he was a putz for thinking this movie was stupid because it's not a it's not a smart movie it's not it it, it tries to be and it loses its purpose halfway through the movie they they don't go to prove on a molecular level where the devil is like proof in the de details and shit uh, they almost end it with Pleasance like ridiculing everybody that's going to be helping for their grasp on reality, their grasp on science. Like 
She yeah. ridicules them for that, and that's the last thing you really hear about them needing to prove that evil exists. It's like, why'd you even call them in the first place? Kind of, because, like, who who are they going to prove it to? Like, just show people the big fucking green oozy thing, and I, I, I don't know. The movie had a few loopholes left open. Should have just called Ghostbusters. They would have taken care of this problem. No problem. <laughs> he got in a just rage. Just would up. have been like, Trap it. yo, this is like the man's incident from like 1842. We could take care of this for about... Beckman, how much should we charge for this one? Uh, this would be 30, 30 grand. <laughs> <laughs> million <laughs> we're dealing with the devil <laughs> oh god speaking of the devil i know that's not going to be who they fight in the new ghostbusters movie it's going to be some norse thing because they they're <laughs> they're trying to make another episode of the real ghostbusters oh. which got them in trouble for saying because jms joe straczynski was like not consult at all but anyway they are huge in the cosplay and whatnot and and i get that because ghostbusters is the coolest shit since sliced bread but they took these red parkas from the cartoon and they they put them in the movie and yep. every ghostbuster that's like a huge cosplayer went batshit crazy to get these things until they find out that they cost 1300 fucking dollars Holy shit, really? Thir it was either 1300 or 1600 I think it was $1,300 for a parka. Oh, my God. And it just so okay, happened Okay, I'm not apologizing for like this it. zero point because that's actually pretty <laughs> interesting. Wow. Yeah, and people are getting it. Like, it, it was, it, it's crazy. Shit. Zero point. They should have just gone with Sam Hain and called it a day. <laughs> Whatever. That's going to be another zero point. Yep, we don't have I'll to do it. I don't care. Like... They On the video game. <laughs> I won't say bullshit. Then he cuts himself off. <laughs> he's gonna let him finish he's just like one of them kind of dogs just once he gets started just let him finish he'll take care of it and he'll be just fine it's true <laughs> and the fire hydrant's outside so my... if you need to take a leak there, there's where it is so. I tell my wife the same thing just let me finish it'll be fine that'll be your next sex tape all right, Kevin, what did you think of, of uh, the score of bathroom, this Bathroom, and she's in there too, but anyway. Zero point. <laughs> Back on track. It was not as interesting as green showers on a summer day, but um, it was better than, say, uh, Escape from New York. It most certainly was. It fit the movie, but it wasn't as, say, as like iconic as Halloween's theme was, or Vampires, or even Big Trouble in Little China. Yeah, I was going to say, like, of all the scoring he has done for his movies, he's really good. This one didn't really seem to have a true identity of itself. It felt like a little bit of, like, each of his other movies it got. It's like it was missing something unique for this movie it's unfortunate like i i understand there's going to be fans that absolutely love it in this movie hey that's cool just my opinion this felt kind of like you know just kind of a kind of a placeholder while he was getting ready to do they live almost <laughs> <laughs> gotta make that money um yeah and and that's okay i know we've we've talked to a lot of people this week uh who knew that we were doing the movie that loved the movie and i yeah. see why you love the movie there's there's a lot to love about it but seeing it as an adult now older than my dad was back then yeah i'm kind of like eh, it's not as good as his other stuff it's not as good as other things that i've seen and it most certainly was not as good as i was expecting it to be 
yeah, this is on the kind of like the, you know, the spectrum where I fall with this movie is I like the movie. I don't love it, but I also don't hate it. Does it have problems? Yeah, it's got some story problems, plot problems, tone problems. You know, I don't really have a problem with like the pacing or the editing. The movie's well put together. It's well shot and it is enjoyable to watch. It's not like it's a chore, like a later movie, like Ghost of Mars, where it's like, what the hell are you doing at this point, guy? At least here, it's like they were trying to do something unique, but at the same time, it's almost a little too unique in what they were trying to do. And it's almost like they got a little too cute with it. Now, I'm not a filmmaker. It's just my opinion. Like they tried to do too much in too short of a movie. It might have been better paced out or singled out to just a couple yeah. different ideas instead of five or six. That's that's all I got about that. But like I said, I like the movie. I own it in my collection. I I watch it about once every couple of few years or if I get on a John Carpenter kick and it's like, sure, I'll watch them all from the beginning, from Dark Star all the way up to about John Carpenter's Vampires. That's about where I check out. Nice. Yeah. Same here. Same here. Um, I, I, I like don't. This Christine, though, I know a lot of people all. aren't fans of that, though. But he did Christine. Yeah. I did not know that. I'm gonna have Let to go watch it now, because if I get like fact checked on our on our comments, I'm gonna scream. Yep, he did Christine in 1983 right after the thing. No shit. Yep. Wow. <laughs> oh, I still need to All right, own I gotta Star go watch Man. that. Shit. Do you I'm missing Star Man? I don't think I've seen Star Man since Christ. Eight, I haven't seen seven? that since I was like we less than I've... 10 years old from the video store, and I'm like this looks interesting, and I don't remember a thing about it. <laughs> no, no, like I remember Enemy Mine, and I remember The Last Starfighter. Those were both kind of the same movie to me as a kid, <laughs> which I know they're not. Kind of like Enemy oh, yeah. Mine is the same movie as Starman to me, which is not the case. And yeah, yeah, I know. I said I watched like all of his movies from like Halloween on up, well, Dark Star and on up, but it's like. I keep forgetting about Starman. That's like the one missing from the collection. I should correct that. Yeah, it's got the dude in it. There's really no going got wrong. Jeff with that. and like Karen Allen in it. So Karen Allen's in it too. All right. Yeah. I can't. I can't say no to Miriam, dude. I can't. Hell no. But, any, but, 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 any, but, but, any, but, any last any, thoughts? Yeah, I any do. last thoughts? Ooh. This, ooh. I have my question of, it belongs in the museum. So, all the way to the left here uh, is the Prince of Darkness poster. That's the original poster that looked so interesting to me. I didn't know who it was that's screaming on the picture or what this green mist was that was coming out of this building. Turns out Only the that's executive the producer that screaming is... about losing his money. <laughs> <laughs> kidding. I'm kidding. And then at some point in the nineties or noughties, I'm going to guess the noughties, late nineties, they came out with the, the Alice Cooper cover here, which is okay, I guess. And then Shout I've Factory never seen Screen put out the last two on the right here. Yeah. The one with Alice? Neither have I. Neither have I. Hmm. But it definitely screams like 90s. It just... Yeah. It does. I don't know why. Like, that cover belongs on a blockbuster shelf. Uh, okay, yeah. It just seems like huh. it would. So, well, of all of those, I got to admit... The Scream Factory ones are pretty nice, and I usually don't like the Scream Factory commissioned art stuff. But these, I like. 
I like this one. The only one that I'm curious about is the one that we used here as our cover where it shows Father Loomis holding out a crucifix, which again, doesn't work. It doesn't holding happen out a crucifix. in the movie. Yeah, out of this thing, like he's trying to protect himself or to keep it at bay. None of that happens. He goes directly to scientists. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I don't know why they did that. It looks cool, but that doesn't happen at all. Right. Kind of like all I the covers. I think they did that what, with the lithograph. Had to be the lithograph. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, because it looks really nice. Yeah. So, and then as far as my final thought in the movie goes, everything was about science, math, physics, and and string theory. Math is evil. <laughs> math is the devil. They say that in the I movie. Did. They try to prove it in the movie. They don't get to. But it is. Math is evil. Your teacher lied. You do have a calculator with you everywhere you fucking go, and you can take it with you everywhere you go, except for inside of a court building. Go out there, be well with one another, and God bless. Just don't do math. And if you have a calculator, put in 58008, flip it upside down, and what do you get? Boobs. Eeps. <laughs> Eeps. People our age or had to use calculators at school, you, you, you know about that. There's a bunch of them. Those motherfuckers. You're not going to have a calculator with you if you need to go here, here, and there. Won't I? Won't I? Can't I use it right now? Gonna use it right now. Ah. Uh, that should, <laughs> yeah, that's going to be another whole zero point. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for tuning in for John Carpenter's Prince of Darkness. We enjoyed it. We liked it. It has issues. But, hey, that's what we're here for, to talk about a fun movie and see what our thoughts are about it. Thank you for tuning in. Please make sure you like, comment, subscribe, share our video. We would love to hit up to 500 subscribers. We've crossed the 250 mark. Thank you, everybody, who has checked us out and is joining us on this path. We'd love to have you along for some more fun. So please do that and we'll see you next time. Make sure you check us out on all of our social media platforms. We got Facebook, Twitter. We are at Suns and Shadows. We're also on Instagram at Suns and Shadows Cast. We are at sunsandshadows.com. Thank you again, everybody. And we'll see you down the road.